time for another one, I guess. Uh, this one's supposed to be more serious or something. Um, as it is when I go into engaging with most anything locked tomb related, um, I'm ready to get hurt, I guess. I'm ready to get hurt again. Uh, you can't hurt as bad as the books. <laughs> I say and maybe I've jinxed myself, we'll see. The, the, um, I watched, um, a locked tomb animatic on Tumblr that was Fences by Paramore, I think, and oof, ouch, that one was so pretty. Alright, there, it's like spin, spinny wheeling, but the bar looks like it's loaded, so let's go for it. There's a girl with dark hair falling in. Waves just like the sea. Mm. The, the cute domestic stuff. I feel like this is gonna. I'm not gonna be able to tell all the lyrics. God, I love the gold. It's the only color. Captions worked. I am very bad at processing words and all of the other stuff at the same time. Oh, do I watch this again too? Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to watch it again because with these guys, everything goes by so fast. Different way. So let's see how it works. Sorry about the encroaching sunlight. Let's hope it doesn't. Uh, mess with my face. This is, this is not mirrored, so this is really throwing me off because I'm moving in the wrong direction. Okay, let's, let's, let's try this. And there's a girl with dark hair falling in, waves just like the sea. A girl is an end to as cold as ice, a girl who is tender asleep. Who is tender asleep? Or tender as sleep? That's what I didn't get the first time. But yeah, this is cool, because like the song was written for the lock tomb, which I just realized because I went um looked at the description and it's a fan song. Uh, and so this artist just kind of went and was just like, okay, so what was this person talking about? What were they referencing with these lyrics? That must have been so much fun. <laughs> A gate or a game? 
Death is a game and a name and a question is a game. Either way. Also, yeah, I forgot that they pick up on uh, Gideon's name. Especially because of the whole, like, you know, Lictor's original names are like a sacred thing for a while there. <laughs> Even though, like, we end up learning quite a few of them. Though, we are not just anyone. The narrator <laughs> learns the, <laughs> them in <a> tarot <laughs> for the second one. <laughs> It is key. A key? That makes me, with 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 the shot of Kiriona, that makes me think of the tower. Because towers sometimes are locked. And we know very, very little about the tower. Other than that weird, like, ominous message um, about the tower re-emerging or the tower wanting John. Whatever the, ori the original one, I think, was in an ARC or something. I remember looking it up because there was no way I was going to be able to crack that John code <laughs> alone. <laughs> there was no way. I was like, I'm not. I'm going to let someone else who actually did it already just tell me. <laughs> queen and a key. But it does make it sound like a queen and a king. It might be king. Either way, that's really cool because because of the whole, like prince thing they've got going. At least for Ianthe, it sort of makes sense because it's while she's in Nibirius' body that she f refers to herself like that. But it's probably something else. I mean, I'm sure it is. Tamsin always puts layers upon layers upon layers of everything, so it's... Hmm. This gets me thinking about all the things. It's a keeper, a key is a traitor, a girl... What? A keeper? A key is a traitor? Okay, this is probably the part where I get lost. <laughs> just like there are several parts upon me rereading Nona that I'm just like, I am still lost, and I feel like there's some things that I can put together, but um, I'm a little too lazy to because I know someone will explain it to me eventually. Because it's just like there's so much going on and so many factors in play that uh, I, I'm not going to be able to figure all of them out alone. <laughs> A doorway a girl is locked under. That's interesting. Because doorway, you know, a doorway makes me think of choices like crossroads, but it's not quite. It's more like a, you know, a passage. Like a a step from one thing into another, from one room into another, from one life, I suppose, into another. It was locked under. It also just makes me think of Electo. <laughs> Stuck. All of them are so interestingly intertwined in all of this. Makes me think of the... the... the theory... I can't remember where I read it or when, but the, you know, kind of tripartite theory of Elictor. That there's got to be a third person involved for a perfect lictor. She mustn't. She doesn't have it. Ends and the promise. The girl is a hospitary. Oh, these are expression. Oof. Oh wow, that was a that was an ouch flash. That, but yes, yes, the body is an end that a girl has forgotten. A girl is a wound and a tomb. Love is a wound and a tomb, honestly, and love lost especially. So. <laughs> so many misunderstandings in all of this. <sighs> a girl is a saint, a director, a witness. A saint, a director, a witness. A director of what? This shot is gorgeous, by the way. It is so pretty. It makes me think of, um, you know, when they break through the glass in the Mithraeum at the very end of the second book, where basically we don't really know what happens after that. It's just Pyrrha and Gideon being like, yeah, we'd rather kind of like drown in weird river water than, you know, be sucked in or, you know, this is, <laughs> this is our option versus the gun or whatever. It's so sad that we only ever get, well, yet, 
Yet, we only ever get that interaction between Gideon and Pyrrha because, my god, that has the potential to be a very interesting dynamic in relationship. It's a girl, it's a room with a view. I love her so much. Death is a girl and love and a monster. A girl is a beast from the deep. Beast from the deep. Yeah, literally. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oof, that's a that's a perfect one for that because that's very interesting. And that scene, there was so much going on when I read it for the first time that I'm pretty sure I like, I just like skip. I was just like, I need to know what's happening next. I need to know how this ends. So I feel like I missed a lot of the nuance in there. So it's going to be really interesting to be, uh, to go through that again, listening to the audiobook because it was a great scene. My God. Like that's, it's, it's kind of, that's kind of the scene where Nona kind of just starts doing things that we, and I'm assuming she, didn't really know that she could do, or maybe she did and just assumed that it was normal. Like, when she takes control of the truck, too, it just seems very much like there is something else at play that we don't quite understand. I mean, that's kind of just how the, all of the books are in general, but... Hmm... <laughs> A girl is a gun, and the death has begotten. Yeah, I really need to look up the lyrics. I should have looked up the lyrics in between, but also, this is a great, this is a great shot. It can turn, <laughs> like, so curious. I might draw my, my sword ready. I have my sword ready. Don't you smile? <laughs> Okay, so, um, I think we figured out that this is how I should, this is how I should watch stuff like this in the future, even if it's not as good, um, video quality? I don't know. Though it's gonna, it's, it's still throwing me off the, the, you know, if it flips this automatically, that's gonna be really, really weird. Well, w we will see. We will see what's going to happen. I am now... Oh, oh it just automatically... Why do you autoplay? I, I thought I turned off autoplay. Okay. Bye. <laughs>